So Hayes is set in the future, about 40 years from now, and it deals with a, a war which is happening in South America. It's a first person shooter, and there's some pretty crazy stuff going on. So the, the sides in the war, one of them is Mantle, which is this kind of um, military um, company that's taken over kind of the roles that the UN and NATO have at the moment, so they're kind of, sort of fighting overseas. And the other side is this rebel side called the Promised Hand, and they've, 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 they've taken over the country. And you go in there as a character called Shane Carpenter to fight the good fight um, against the rebels. And over the course of the game, a lot of pretty crazy stuff happens, and you learn a lot about yourself and a lot about Mantle. Core to uh, Hayes is Mantle's use of a substance called Nectar. And uh, Nectar is a kind of bio biological, pharmaceutical, combat-enhancing uh, medication that's given to the troopers. And that allows them to do things which they otherwise wouldn't be able to do. And that kind of alters your perception, improves your fighting abilities. And then on, on, on a greater scale in the game, you, you'll, you'll learn to use Nectar, but you'll also see that there are, there's a, a little bit of a sinister side to it as well. So it's, it's a narrative thing and a key gameplay element. And I think it really gives us an edge um, in, in, in redefining what you can do in an FPS. One of the things about Nectar is it's, it's, it's upping the performance of the troopers all the time. However, the Nectar is both automatically and manually administered by the player. So the player is using it to kind of almost like a boost. Yeah? But we've got also we've got the equivalent of an overboost, so you can overdo it. So if you, if, you, if you juice up with too much Nectar, things start to go wrong for you. You can find it difficult to perceive friend from foe in the battlefield. And I mean, in, in, in the work we've done so far, we're looking at the co-op, that's it's hilarious. You know, suddenly you've got the guy who just goes stir crazy beside you and he's shooting everywhere. And sometimes the best thing to do is just to kind of like bitch slap him down and wait, wait for him to clear his head and get back up with it. But on, on, on the rebel side, you can, there are things the rebels can do to trigger that. So I mean, we're not going into the details probably just yet, but there are exploits. We wanted to have this built into the core gameplay, this kind of scissors, paper, stone thing, so you can do things on one side that affect the other side adversely. We made a decision quite early on that we wanted to have a very continuous flow to the game. Um, there aren't any loading screens. Um, you, as you go from kind of combat mission to combat mission, you're either doing it being picked up on a dropship and there's kind of banter going on and evolution of the narrative in, 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 in the dropship, or sometimes you're on road, so it's actually a, a driving level built into the game. Um, some of them are combat driving, some of them are kind of more kind of like challenging driving. As a company, I like the idea of trying to do things which are kind of quite filmic with the narrative in games. Um, all too often, that's something which is just forgotten about. Um, and I think particularly with Hayes, we've got something, again, which, like with Second Sight, the narrative structure and the things that happen in the narrative tie directly back into the gameplay.